wonderful day. I'm excited about it. Um, it couldn't be more wonderful today. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> you know, it's always that, that special day you kind of look forward to. This morning, the Lord woke me up at 5.30. <laughs> okay. So, I got up early this morning. I was up early and... Yeah, there was lots to do, but the sun was shining, and it was uh, just going to be a wonderful day. Not at 5.30. <laughs> yeah. The sun was not shining at 5.30. Well, I, you know, I kind of laid here for a while, and then, <laughs> then I popped up and then, you know, got ready. So, um, before we begin our worship service today, I do have some announcements, as I always do. Uh, the first announcement is that uh, uh, the Women's Social is happening on Thursdays at 10 a.m., we also have the men's breakfast this Tuesday. It's coming up. It's at 9 a.m. It's at Big Al's, and uh, there's breakfast specials, or if you wanted to order a steak, you could. <laughs> so, but it's a lot of fun. You know, bring a friend, um, bring your neighbor. You know, this is a good time for the men to get together and talk and just kind of talk about things, and it's all good. It's a good thing. Uh, we have a soup and salad coming up on uh, Thursday, August 11th. We have a sign-up sheet that's actually in the Nartifax. Um, we're looking for, if you want to uh, donate a salad um, or a soup for the event, this is a fundraiser for the church. So um, all the help, or as I always say, many hands make like the work. So uh, if your feet move to do that, follow it. Okay. Um, our Rockwood Pantry is uh, open on Monday, August 29th. We did have some, some new folks that came. I uh, actually had another phone call that came in um, on Thursday. The person never arrived on Friday, but we'll be giving them a call back. We have some food for them and some toiletry items, and we also have somebody else to call back on. Um, we are looking to uh, um, get some more exposure on that. And uh, the one thing we need to work on, and uh, I'm not sure who did the soup and salad signs for the roadside signs, but if we can get that same person to help us with some pantry signs and we can put them by the road, that'd be awesome. That will help us get the little visibility out there on Saturday and Sunday before the pantry opens uh, to the public. And again, it's always open. We have our campfire night. Uh, we had a pretty good campfire night um, this past Friday. We'll have another one in August 26. Um, I heard the music was good. <laughs> the company was good. It was, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Um, you probably noticed in the, uh, on the monitor during the prelude something called Alpha. And uh, we are going to be uh, holding an Alpha um, here at Rapid First Congregational Church. You'll actually, we'll see these in the Narthax. Uh, this is, says, join us for a conversation. The Alpha program is intended for those that are agnostic, those that are atheists, those that are just kind of looking uh, to get some questions about God. You know, we have three generations of unchurched people uh, that are outside the church today, and many of them, there's thousands of them, they have no idea who God is. And so basically this program is intended to bring them the answers that they're looking for. Like the first question the faith that we'll go through is, is there more to life than this? And this next week is, who is Jesus? And why did Jesus die? So there's a list of questions on the back, these questions of faith. And you'll notice at the very bottom that you're invited. It starts on Tuesdays at 6.30. And what'll happen is they'll come here at 6.30. They'll connect. And we're going to have the great bread. We'll do pizzas or tacos that day. And they'll get to meet new people. And then afterwards, they're going to watch an episode regarding, is there more to life than this? And then we'll have a little discussion afterwards that, uh, that you can share your thoughts and hear what others have to say. It's going to be a non-threatening um, program. It allows people to lean in. These are folks that will never walk into the church on a Sunday morning whatsoever. And these are the folks that we need to help. And so this is, I am excited. We're the only church in this area that's doing this. So this is, to me, is this, uh, God is pushing this on my heart. This is something we're going to do. It's exciting. 
and you know neighbors, you know friends, you know family members, they might be asking themselves these very questions. Take a look at it, you can take these with you and hand them out. Again, it's, it's non-judgmental. We're gonna show our love to them, and we're gonna answer their questions for them, hopefully, okay? We also have our bottle and can fundraiser that's happening. And again, thanks to all those that are bringing in bottles and cans, especially Michael and Kathy for taking them and cashing them in for us. So it's a great fundraiser. And before we begin our worship service, I do have, uh, um, Diane wants to come up and say a few words. So, Diane. Well, we had uh, my sister's memorial yesterday, and there were Catholics here, Methodists here, and some people that didn't even go to church. But you know what? They were all touched by this wonderful man. The world was blessed when he was born. Thank God for your birthday today. But I want to say thank you to everybody that maybe you weren't here, but I know you said a prayer because our hearts felt it. And I love my church family, and I want to thank everyone. And I just want to thank you in person for loving me. To, for me today, uh, is an, it's a very exciting day that we're going to have a reception of new disciples here at Rockwood First Congregational Church. I'm excited. Because it's my birthday, this is like the best birthday present ever. Um, Diane Allman and Jim Julian, if you please come on up. Okay. All right. Brothers and sisters of Christ, this morning we come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to receive these disciples into fellowship of this church. We welcome Diane Allman and Jim Julian to our congregation. Diane and June have already confessed their faith in Jesus Christ and have been received in the full communion of Christ Church. They come to join us in the privileges and the responsibilities of discipleship in Rockwood First Congregational Church. And this is a charge to both of you, okay? Diane, as well as June. Okay. And basically, you will repeat, um, you will say, I do, after this, okay? And I'll let you know when. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ to be your Lord? Do you promise to fulfill the duties of fellowship in this church in token of your association in the church universal? Do you resolve to join with us in Christian worship and service, in giving and fellowship, and to further work the gospel in the community and throughout the world? As God shall give you a, and your response should be, I do. I do. Yeah. We all have, uh, hopefully everybody has a bulletin. No. Okay. We'll need a bulletin. Okay. So we're going to read this, this covenant together as a, as, as a congregation, and I'll begin. We the people of Rockwood First Congregational Church. Covenant with the Lord and with one another to proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, to study and work together so that we may worship and serve Him according to His word. We pledge to attend the services of our church, to observe the sacraments, to teach and listen to God's word, to provide financial support through our offerings, and to participate in the administrative, worship, service, and maintenance needs of this church as our individual abilities of the Lord. We pray for the wisdom, strength, patience, and God's guidance as it manages the adventure of faith together. Amen. Jim, do you accept this as your covenant of life, work, and service? Responsibility. And to our congregation, will you, the congregation of Rockwood First Congregational Church, as the opportunity is given, strive to support our new disciples, Diane and June, 
as the need may arise, and your response would be, we do. We do. So let us all bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, our Father, the source of our strength and hope, we thank you for these servants who have, on this day, come into the fellowship of your church. Grant Diane and June your blessings today and through all the days to come. Sustain us all by your grace, that we may run with patience the race that is set before us and be helpers of one another. They share in each other's joy and victory over evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you, Diane and Jim, into the fellowship of Rockwood First Congregational Church. On behalf of this church, and as a token of our common bond in Christ, we now offer you the right hand of fellowship. Grace to you and peace from God the Father, Jesus the Son, and our helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. said it was going to be an exciting day. <laughs> you know, it's time for us to refresh our hearts. Are we ready to refresh our hearts this morning? Yes. To, to renew our minds, to rejuvenate our souls, to be secure in earthly treasure, but not rich towards God, is like having a heart without <clears throat> heavenly treasure. Let us all rise and sing together, opening hymn, Lord, I Need You.
please join me in the call to worship, the invocation, and the Lord's Prayer. Our lives are in the care of God. God has given us abundance and hope. This day we have come to praise and thank God for all that God has done for us. We gather to celebrate God's love and to offer our lives in service. Come, let us open our hearts to the Lord. Let us rejoice in God's goodness and love. Loving and forgiving God, be present with us now as we offer praise and thanksgiving for the abundance we have received through your grace. We have gathered us in from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, to be your people. Like a loving parent, you have sustained our needs, sharing your love with us, satisfying our thirst, and filling our hunger with good things. Help us, Lord, to heed your vow, that we might find deliverance through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It was Jesus who taught us to pray together. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us uh, ready our hearts and our minds and let's think about our Lord and let us pray together. Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh Lord, we stand in the line for groceries, for books, and some of us stand in line for gadgets. We place our energies in gathering things that have some type of monetary value. And at some point later on, we justify our actions by thinking that they are somehow good for us and our children. When we gather enough, we tend to relax and say to ourselves that it is all right for us to eat and drink and be merry. We believe we have done our best, but have we, Lord? Have we given thought to how we have given our best to serve others? Have we spent too much time gathering and building bigger containers for our worldly things? Have we overlooked the good we could have done? Sometimes we can fool ourselves, Lord, but we can't fool you whatsoever. We want everything, yet most things are not as important. But the good that we can offer others is very important. And we ask for your help. We ask for you to nudge us and encourage us to do the right things. Today, Lord, we have gathered here to ask for your healing mercies for people and situations that have impacted our lives, including all those who are on our prayer list, like Cliff Gagdon. We pray for God's assurance and wisdom. Darlene Thomas, we pray for successful cancer treatment and comfort. We also pray today for Nathalie Beach, who is healing from uh, a broken hip, and she's living with her son now. We pray for her. We also are praying for those who are facing abuse, 
and those who are being bullied, those who are hungry and thirsty, those who are facing illness, those who are facing war, those who are facing addiction, and those who are grieving the lusts of a loved one. The Lord, hear our prayers. At this time, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with all those who are viewing this service. Bring us to you. Refresh our inner spirits, cleanse our thoughts, and transform our ways as we lift up our prayers to you now in silence. Oh God, we place our trust in your compassionate love. Help us to bring love, peace, and joy as gifts to be abundantly given to all. Give us again your mercy and care. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As you came in today, we had an opportunity to place your offerings in our offering plates. Sometimes the blessings in our lives are overflowing, like a basket full of picked fruit. And other times our blessings are not so abundant. Whether our baskets, baskets are full or they have very little in them, let us offer to God what we can to help with the mission and maintenance needs of Christ's church. As Christ's disciples, let us all rise and sing together with joy and thanksgiving in our heart, the doxology. Love. 
to fill our souls with meekness and compassion for others. Let us all rise and sing together our second hymn, Let Him Reign. to burst when you hear that quiet whisper and the fire begins to burn when you know deep down inside you there is something you must do let the Holy Spirit make his home in you let him rest When you're walking through the darkness And the mountain seems too high When the ocean waves surround you And the flame begins to die When you face those times of trouble But you know His love is true Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you Our scripture today, it starts out with someone in the crowd saying to Jesus, tell my brother 
to divide the inheritance with me. The man is asking Jesus to be to make a judgment call about the ownership of the family's estate. As you know, God knows all things, right? God knows all things, especially what a per what's in a person's heart and what's in a person's mind as to why someone would ask certain things, like a family's inheritance. Jesus refused to get involved. He refused. Why? Because he knew there was no answer. That was resolved the real problem here with these two brothers that was going on within their heart. It was about materialism. It was about greed. They both wanted to accumulate. Accumulate as much stuff as they could. Here's something to know. During these times, there was a mosaic rule that guided people. It guided people regarding families' estates. How to divide up a family's estate. The inheritance rule states that the oldest Jewish son would inherit two shares, two shares of the property, which probably created some problems for the rest of the, the siblings. And the remaining portions would of the of the estate would divided up equally among the remaining children. I'm sure the father of these two brothers expected them to follow these rules. They were expected to follow them. To love one another. To love one another. Rather than to fight with one another over worldly things. This is where Greed begins to set itself in to the heart. The greatest need that these two brothers had was their need to change their ways, to change their ways, to change their minds, to change their thoughts, to change their hearts. How many times have we heard this said? I prayed to God over and over again for this. I pray for, to God over and over again for that. Have you heard that before? I pray for someone to give me something of great value. But God never answered. God never answered. Because their prayers were lifted up with greed in their hearts. These two brothers were more interested in Jesus serving them rather than Jesus saving them. Our society today has a thirst. It really does. A thirst of getting more. Would you agree with me on that? A thirst of getting more. The more we have, the better. Right? That's the model, right? The more we have, the happier, happier I will be. This is a drumbeat that's being, being beaten today in today's advertising machine. That's the drumbeat you're hearing. You are not living unless you have the latest thing. The latest thing. The, the number 11 to 12 to 13 to 14. But you don't have the latest thing. Whatever it might be, you have not arrived, is the message, unless you have one of these. Now all of a sudden, today's advertising is trying to define people. Trying to define people as to who they are. Either you're the haves or you're the have-nots. Shame on you if you don't have one of these. Just think how happy you'll be if you have one of these things. 
this thing. You know, my friends, we need to ask ourselves this question. Am I going to allow worldly greed to define me? Am I? Does accumulating stuff really make someone happy in life? What do you think? The people in the, the TV commercials or in the commercials, are they really that happy? Are they? About the thing that they're endorsing? The answer is no. You know why? Because they're actors. They're actors. They're just pretending to be happy. Chances are they don't even own one of those things. They're all excited about that thing. What's really happening inside them? What's really happening inside the heart? What's really happening inside one's greedy heart? There is a thirst. There's a thirst for money. There's a thirst for things that money can buy. And there's also a thirst for power in our country today. <clears throat> Jesus tells us this parable to reveal to those, reveal to those who are leaning in, those who are leaning in to learn from Jesus. Those who are leaning in to learn from Jesus. That there is a danger. There's a danger that can lurk in the heart. And that danger is absolutely greed. Is absolute greed. Jesus responds to this man's request by saying, my friend, who appointed me judge between you? Great question. Jesus is making it very clear that he's not willing to get involved in this situation whatsoever. He knows the real reason why. And he says to them what? He says to them something very important. Watch out. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Think about what they were asking for. He says, life does not consist. Life does not consist in the abundance of possession, in the abundance of things, in the abundance of stuff. And Jesus then begins to tell them this parable. He says, the ground of a rich man produced an abundant harvest. This was an enormous crop like he's never seen before. The land was fertile. But why was it so fertile? Because in many ways it was blessed by God. All the blessings we get, it does come from God. The fruits from this harvest is way beyond the landowner's dreams. It's beyond his expectations. He never saw this coming whatsoever. It's beyond what he needs to sustain himself. And his first thought is this. What shall I do? I have no place to store <laughs> my crops. What shall I do? There are no thoughts about blessing others whatsoever. His only thought is the Trinity of I, which is me, myself, and I, and how high can I build that mountain for myself? This is what it looks like inside one's greedy heart. Right away, right away. His best solution is to hoard the abundance. He believes that the answer to his, his dilemma is to tear down his old barns and build bigger ones, larger ones. There are no prayers of thanksgiving to God for all the blessings that he has received. That is a not even in his thoughts. Think about this. 
How would you respond? How would you respond? I can hear you. How would you respond? How would you respond if you were this rich farmer? How would you respond if you had this problem of having too much wealth? Some people wished they had this problem. I hear it all the time. I wish I had that problem. They believe their life would be much better. Not really. With much comes much heartache and headache. What if you inherited a great deal of money today? Let's say you discovered that you were the winner of the mega millions yesterday of what $1.3 billion. This blessing alone would put you right in the middle of a dilemma. It would. You would be in a crisis dilemma. Besides shaking, <laughs> of what you would do with all that wealth. Would you pray to God? Would you pray to God? Would you ask the Lord to help you, to tell you how you would spend that money, how what you can do with that money? God knows our thoughts. God knows our intentions because they're all connected to our hearts. They're all connected to our minds and our souls and our spirit. The spirit of God is inside us, each of us. And the spirit is pushing each of us every single day to do the right things. We are accountable for our actions. We're coming. Our actions are not hidden away or out of sight, especially from God. What's interesting to me is this. If you are to, if you observe rich people, and there's lots of them, you can observe them. But not all rich people are like this. But if you observe rich people, those who have an enormous amount, an enormous abundance. One thing you'll notice, at least one thing I've noticed, the richer they become, the more confused they seem to become. The more concerned they become about keeping what they have. They're all about building those bigger barns. The greedy thoughts only steal away the best thoughts that they could ever, ever have. Greedy people have a place for everything. It's like the picture on our monitor. If you look at the picture on our monitor. All you see is an abundance of stuff, right? An abundance of stuff. This is what it looks like in their heart. This is what it looks like in their heart. It's all about stuff. It's full of things. What don't you see in this picture? What you don't see in this picture is this. You don't see the divine things of God. There is no room for love. There are no heavenly treasures here either. Laid up for oneself. What have they done? What have they done with their abundance? Their abundance is exposed to moss. Their abundance is exposed to rust that consumes. Their abundance is exposed to thieves who break in and steal. This is what it looks like inside 
one's greedy heart. This is what it looks like. So this is how the Lord sees it. He just says, God would say to them, you fool. And they build these up. This is all they focus on. God would say, you fool. Tonight you die. Your barns are full of grain that you have hoarded for yourself. Who now will inherit it? Who now will inherit it? Who gets it? Who gets it now? Where are your treasures in heaven? This is how God observes wealth, especially when wealth becomes more important than our relationship with God. When this is pushed in front of God, this is how God sees it. They're not seeing God in here. My friends, there will be a day when God will call up a greedy person and God will pass a sentence of death upon them and their only thoughts are about their stuff. All my stuff. They're concerned about leaving it all behind. All my riches. All my abundance. Who gets it now? Why haven't you put your treasures in heaven? Why haven't you put your treasures in heaven? I'm sure that's the message that God is saying. The death of worldly things can be a miserable, terrible death. For those who put their faith in worldly treasures rather than in heavenly ones. When people place no faith in godly things, they often find out it's too late. It's too late that they've made that wrong decision and it's too late. The right thing to do is to lean into Jesus and to learn. Our takeaway is this. Is our abundance being used to bring glory to God's kingdom? Are we laying up treasures in heaven for our eternal future? Amen. Let there be cool air. <laughs> All right. I, I've been touched today. I really have. I've been touched at 5.30 this morning. Wake up. Wake up, Pastor David. It's time to get up. So I'm up. I'm ready to go. And I'm glad that we're here to worship the Lord. And we've given God thanks and praise for the many blessings that the Lord has placed on our doorsteps. And we have sung songs of admiration for our Lord this day. And we have learned this on this day from Jesus. And we lean into Jesus, we learn. The one thing we should think about is this again. Is our abundant blessings being used? Are they being used to bring glory to God's kingdom? Are we laying up treasures in heaven for our eternal future? Our last hymn is kind of a contemporary hymn. It's one of my favorites, and you know we're going to go sing it loud today. Okay, so it's our last hymn, and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do as we praise our Lord. Great are you, Lord. You stand up and sing it with me.
Keep 